For those of you that have good enough eyes, you can see the dry tears on my cheeks right now. So I've just been watching myself and crying. I don't know why I even give these fucking seminars, because I don't like it. God damn. Somebody in here told me a little while ago, I'm doing it because I said I'm going to do it, even though I don't. Oh, you, the little fucking Lebanese drug dealer. You're going to do it because you said you're going to do it, even though you don't want to do it, right? I said I was going to do it 30 years ago, even though I realized it was a piece of shit when I started. That means coaching you. 30 years. That's why most of you are still married. That old flabby ass you were over on. Or that soft, flash a dick that you roll over on depending on what sex you are that's why you still deal with your toxic mothers and that's why you're here the earth is flat the world is flat and this is the last fucking town on the abyss before you go over you've tried every fucking thing known to man transgender and jesus and it hasn't worked that's why you're here we're the last saloon we're the last drink on the edge of the bar we have a few of you that have been here before we have any of you that have started the qla process wrongfully we have several of you that have called my mentees that i told you not to call and you wonder why you don't have a pot to piss in or a fucking window to throw it out of you're fucked. You were born to be fucked. On the paperwork that you filled out, I said, what's the highest performance thing you ever did? Nothing. Or coming here, which is like nothing. What's the highest performance thing your parents ever did? Nothing. What's the highest performance thing your siblings ever did? Nothing. Your grandparents? Nothing. Well, nothing, nothing, and nothing, even in new math, it's still nothing. And yet you're here, taking an abuse of an old man. But he doesn't even look like you. Have you noticed? See the difference between poverty and success? Hornets rubs off. Smiling, chuckling, and laughing is a coping mechanism because you have no ball. For those of you that got smirks on your fucking face now. And every time you smile during the week, I'm gonna pound on you. Every time you chuckle, stop smiling, you little shithead. You're giving tacit approval to what I'm saying. What I'm saying happens to be the truth. You're all cunts, and that's why you're here. But you don't have to leave here a cunt. That's the opposite part of the seminar. Whatever the opposite of a cunt for a woman, that's what you, the women are. I normally say all guys, because even though you all look like real gals, we don't have any cross-dressers, I'll still call you guys. This week, seminars changed, and I've looked at some other data, and remember the first seven years of the seminar, I didn't uh, keep any records, because I didn't think I'd be doing this past seven years. I'd be off doing my jolly someplace like you. It didn't work out that way. After 15 or 20 years, Sally said that she didn't think anybody was going to copy me. You do a successful program on the internet, they're copying it in two, three days, right? Sally and I and a couple others thought that we knew actually some of you, some people would copy me. I'm going to celebrate my 30th anniversary on the 23rd of this month. We got no copy. We got a few pretends, but they're not really copying the QLA model. And for those of you that did the QLA model, you did it wrong. And you're here because you did it wrong. You went to private equity. You went to for a joint venture. You're not reading my material clearly. Getting a 50% partner is not a joint venture partner. We're going to go through this in more detail. So in that regard, we're going to change the seminar. I'm going to be more explicit. Some of you, I've talked to six of you so far in the one-on-one -on -one time, have said, I know I did it wrong, but I'm here like um, whore in church. A girl used to fuck the uh, university football team, and now she wants to be a nun. That's what you guys remind me of. Everybody understand that who's the primary language is not English. We ought to stop that too, Sally. I'm fucking having retard fucking foreign language. It's, it's so bullshit. And there's always one imbecile in the class. I think I already know who the imbecile is from looking at your paperwork. We're not going to slow the class down because of that one imbecile. Now, if we have six, seven, eight imbeciles, then I've got to shift the slides around in fair to the other group. But I want as many people in the seminar to have the opportunity to use the model. We've already got a bunch of repeats, not because I didn't teach it well, because they were the imbeciles and I didn't recognize them. I'm not saying every repeat in here is an imbecile, but close to it. Now, I know we have one group, Dutch morons here. I'm going to get around to you Dutch morons. People speak Dutch in here, native language. Oh, good. I told you not to congregate. This was not a networking program, right? But you did it anyway, because you're weak. You had to be liked and effective. And you can't be weak with this program. You fail. This young man came with two other guys, brothers. We'll call them the doofus brothers, so we don't embarrass the real names. From Arizona. Well, they have morons in Arizona anyway. So, I mean, what else can I say? Two of the brothers, one brother, one day or four days after he left, he said, ah, it's not for me. I knew it was not for him the second day he was here. In the 90s, I used to go around and say, you're going to make it, you're going to fail, you're going to make it, you're going to fail, you're going to make it, you're going to fail. The first fucking day, by the end of the first day, which is tomorrow, I was only right about 95% of the time. So, I stopped. But now I'm right 99% of the time. You spill out the paperwork, send me the money, and I tell you whether you're going to make it or not. Don't waste your time. That's how simple it is. When our 12 year old daughter went to the seminar, she's now 36, she said, easy peasy, daddy. Intellectually, you can give me a test now I'll get 100%. She was right. It's not the intellectual part. It's the hard part. It's the emotional part because you've had poor role models. At best, you maybe had a mom, part-time dad, if one, an older sibling, a grandparent. What the fuck do they know about anything? Nothing. What kind of role model? What kind of benchmark did they give you? Obviously nothing. Because nothing, nothing, and nothing is still fucking nothing. Even with a new man. But that's why you're here. Some of you come from countries where it's like taking candy from a baby, shooting fish in a barrel. It's so easy. Because the ethnicities are fucking idiot. A couple of you are from tough countries where it's not so fucking easy. But I point to Peter Horasti from Hungary, which is about as communist as you can still get. And he now is the biggest healthcare owner in the motherfucking country in five years. He's about this tall. He weighs 80 pounds. He wouldn't say shit if it went in his fucking mouth. When we see the 12 or 15, depending on how it goes, in addition to listening to our 
our guest star here. Who did you relate to? Roberto, uh, the mouse from Hungary, uh, the Goomba brothers from uh, Cuba, blah, blah, blah. And I still remember where this young lady with the long hair sitting, a woman from the Netherlands, she related to Steve Jobs. And they say, I don't remember, they say I leaped over the desk to choke her. Because if there was anybody that's ever come to the seminar at that time, 27 years, that was antithesis of Steve Jobs, it was her. Steve Jobs, in his last breath, that he took, or the last shit he took, it's got more brains in this whole fucking room. And then I found out, cause she's been to the seminar two, three times now, she is a senior person with one of the great big investment banks. And you all know why I've said it a thousand times, why Bank of America, Deutsche Bank, ING, Barclays Bank doesn't give this kind of information because there's no fees associated with it. We're gonna compare ourselves to Warren Buffett, to one of my idols, so to speak. And he talks about his $10,000 of invested in 1962 or four, whatever it is. It'd be $370 million. If you reinvest the dividends and reinvest the capital gains, which nobody does, but if you did that, it'd be $370 million. If you did the same thing with QLA, it's 13, 31 zeros after it. 13, 31 zeros after, comparing apples and apples. I don't know what 31 zeros is. Tonight you're gonna have homework. You're gonna see a couple of short films. Uh, what's your takeaway? I don't have lunch with you. I don't have breakfast with you. Sally makes me have dinner with you because poorness and stupidity rubs off. Even though I only train about two to 230, 40 kids a year, it's like Chinese water torture. It's not the fifth drop on your head, it's five million drop. You guys, had virtually no positive effect on my life. So you're gonna have homework, and if you don't do the homework, don't come to class. And I've heard everything, including the dog ate my homework. And unless somehow our dog find you, that's impossible. And I judge what I'm gonna do the following afternoon and day based on the input of the homework. More is better. A year from now, one of you, maybe the blondie back there, is gonna call Kim because you're, you think it's life death, I won't. And then Kim will say, so-and-so. And I said, oh, what's in her file? Well, she did all the homeworks. She was late twice, she did this, she did that. I'm not interested, tell her to go fuck Herself. That's exactly what the answer would be. When I get nauseous and I look at you, that means you've had a lasting impression. Nothing you're gonna experience when you leave here will be important to me, except numbers. That means deal. Go fuck yourself, kill yourself, cut your wrists, cut your throat. Metaphorically speaking. Is that right, Sal? Metaphorically speaking. If you're gonna kill yourself, kill yourself off the estate, please. Too much fucking paperwork if you kill yourself on the estate. Four or five seminars ago, we had a psychotic breakdown. Six or seven seminars, we had a guy shit himself. Nobody has shit themselves in, in years. But we had a guy, he shit himself from where you're sitting in the back corner to the toilet, to his cabin. Back on fire. I know when people piss themselves and shit themselves and pass out and have psychotic breaks, I'm at the top of my game. I prefer not suicide. I'm gonna show metaphorically. If you're gonna cut your wrist, I'll show you how to do it the right way instead of the half ass way. This you're not gonna kill anybody, let alone yourself. We have active duty military audience, which I thank you for your service. We have one person in the seminar that has one of the same regrets that I do. You may have gone to school someplace where they say there are no stupid questions. That's a lie. If you've gone through the material, I told you to look at billions in succession. I told you to look at my dance does the extreme. And I'll question you. I'll know within three questions whether he did it or not. In my black book, I wouldn't piss on his face if it were in fire, which is the worst thing to me. And I'm told, full disclosure, I knew President Trump when he wasn't a president. He has a black book that went from this big to this big called Revenge. Those of you that looked at the polls, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. After he got convicted here recently, he went up in the polls. How is that possible? How is that fucking possible? And he's making it a positive because he didn't get convicted of rape. If you were in that courtroom, you would have got convicted of rape. Most people, other than myself, would have gotten convicted of rape. And that's why one of the most important persons on your dream team board is your lawyer and the extension, the law firm that you use.